thank you for coming and um, this first session here with the Happy and Proud project. We've received some money through the Heritage Lottery Fund Young Roots project and the idea is that we're going to work together to research about the history of the textile industry here in Burnley and to look at the past and into the future. The whole idea is for you to discover things about yourselves and about Burnley that make you happy and proud. That's what the whole project's about. The project that we've been working on with the Year 11s from Hamilton College and the Year 6s from Cherry Fold School came about um, because we worked on a project last year, uh, early last year, with the Year 11s around aspirations and we wanted to carry on working with that group of young people because we could see potential for more work. So Alicia came up with this wonderful idea of applying for some Young Roots Heritage Lottery funding and to look at women from history and present women, inspirational women that the young girls could research and look at doing some creative arts. As part of the project we wanted the girls to learn a range of new skills, do things that they might never have tried before, meet people face to face and speak to them and find out how they had achieved what they were doing in their lives and what had inspired them as women. Uh, it's a very ambitious project. We're working with two groups of young women who have never sewn before and we're asking them to develop their skills and confidence to create unique banners which will be displayed as part of the culmination of the project. Lynn told me there was a comment from one young woman at the last project that said, nothing good ever comes out of Burnley. And we all very strongly felt that that wasn't true and we wanted to find a project that gave the young women a chance to discover that wasn't true for themselves as well. Textiles have really been one of the key industries that have made Burnley the place it is. It's got a really strong tradition of mills and with that women being very central to the workforce and therefore being paid and having an identity and there are some really political women from Burnley and the surrounding area that we wanted the girls now to find out about and to celebrate their lives and achievements and then to look forward and think okay well what can we achieve? There is good that comes out of Burnley and where are we going to take it? My name is Daisy May Georgie Ratcliffe. I live in Burnley and I go to Hamilton Community College. My name is Lex Louise Alden. My name's Shannon Louise Balderstone. I wanted to get involved because um, I was interested in finding out about inspirational women and women who work in mills. Today we've been getting to know each other, asking each other questions. First we got to know each other by playing the chat boxes game and then we made some canvases with quotes on them about being happy and proud. We wrote some stuff about ourselves and we wrote a quote and we wrote some words what women might get called good and negative words. I think I wrote remember to love your body and I chose it because some women get insecure about the body and about themselves. I think it helped in confidence and learning new skills. As part of the project we wanted the girls to experience uh, going to visit historical buildings uh, and other places because a lot of the girls have not even been out of Burnley so we thought it would be a really good way for the girls to go, and go to new places and we've been to several places so our partner, our historical partner is Gawthorpe Hall which is obviously local but the majority of the girls have never been before and we spent a day there looking at some of the materials that are already there, some of the really old uh, textiles that they've got in there at the museum. And we spent time looking at the exhibitions that we've got there. Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Gawthorpe Hall. I'm Jenny Waterson. I'm the learning curator here at uh, Gawthorpe Textiles Collection. And it's lovely to have you here today. We're going in to look at some lovely textiles from the collection. The textile collection is here because it was the, um, the work of Rachel K. Shuttleworth. Um, she was a real expert maker herself and loved textiles, so collected this amazing group of textiles. And she was the last of the Shuttleworth family to live here at Gawthorpe Hall. And the Shuttleworths built this fabulous building in 1600, between 1600 and 1605. So it's over 400 years old, this building. 
Miss Rachel Shuttleworth, was a woman out of her time really, in that she genuinely believed that developing textile skills, simple stitching had a, a benefit both in terms of developing your uh, self-esteem and well-being and also developing employability skills. And this project really feeds into that philosophy. They've looked at some of the Gawthorpe textile collection. One piece in particular was um, a 19th century signature quilt where every person who was involved in fundraising for that project had their name embroidered on a tablecloth and they took that idea and have wanted to have their own names embroidered on the banners to sort of a nod to that history. This is a type of sort of coverlet um, that's called a signature coverlet um, or a signature quilt. Now I'll refer to all of these items as coverlets um, and hopefully not trip up and say quilt instead because um, there, is a big, there is a big difference between quilts and coverlets. Coverlets are ones that haven't got any padding in them. So this top one here is um, a sort of really typical um, signature coverlet which is um, a type of item that was usually done for a, a sort of charity um, event or as a presentation piece so sometimes if somebody had been a particularly um, sort of important donor to a charity or a supporter of that charity then these kinds of things would be made as a sort of thank you present for that person but more commonly they were done um, as a kind of collective um, piece that would record the names of people who had um, donated or helped out for a cause. If you didn't have the money to be photographed or have your portrait painted or something, people did feel like they might be kind of forgotten and lost after they were gone. So there was quite a lot of um, sort of marking your name on things and that's why a lot of people that stitched things actually did put their names on things because they wanted to be remembered as the person who had made that. If you want to get up and have a little look at the item, I know this one's quite small on the table so if a few if you get up at a time and have a look. I'm just thinking you might want to think about whether you're going to stitch your names into the banners you make so that in a hundred years time your names will still be there. Miss Rachel was interested in using her collection as a way to educate and inform the wider community and was a firm believer in arts activities, textiles particularly, promote self-confidence, encourage self-esteem and promote well-being. And those are things that we wanted our young women to take away from the project. They saw the gallery space where their work's going to be exhibited at the end of the project and I think that was one of those moments where they thought, OK, this is actually a bigger deal than we'd realised. One of the lovely parts of the project, I think, has been that these Year 11 girls, as well as learning the skills for themselves, have also been tasked with mentoring the Year 6 girls and showing them the skills they've learnt to help the Year 6s develop as well. We're going to be doing some banners, so we're here to like, get some information and kind of to be inspired about it. And then one week we're going to make um, some banners. The girls, I think, have found it really, really interesting going visiting all these buildings. The other place we went to was the People History Museum at Manchester and we thought that was really relevant again for the girls to go and look at because we had a lot of, there were a lot of historical things there from sort of 100 years ago and a lot more modern up-to-date things so messages that they wanted to get across to other young people in different ways, different creative arts that they'd use. Obviously it has an amazing collection of banners and the banner conservation unit that's based there so the girls were able to see Greenham Common banners, CND banners, right through to the really ornate, beautifully painted Union banners, and to try and think about not only the techniques and the skills used in making those banners, but also, and perhaps more importantly, the content. What were the banners trying to communicate? And that really helped us to have those conversations with them about what they wanted to put on their banners. 1903 uh, is the date that the Women's Social and Political Union was formed. Now, the Women and Social Political Union was the group that was formed by uh, Mrs. Pankhurst here in Manchester. And it's the group that we often know, uh, a suffragette group. Uh, and do you all know about suffragettes? Yeah. yeah. So suffragettes were uh, milita militant, and that means they would use sometimes direct action uh, and force 
they would damage property uh, and break the law sometimes in order to get their message across. If you can make out there is three colours, um, obviously the white here is quite dirty and in conservation we don't try and alter things too much in terms of how we preserve these kind of banners, we don't want to alter them too much. The suffragette movement was uh, among one of the first political movements that understood the importance of marketing themselves. Um, so they branded themselves with these sort of free colours uh, that became uh, attached to every bit of promotion they did. There was all kinds of aprons and banners and clothing that have those colours, the purple, the white uh, and the green. And that became really significant to the suffragette movement and you will see it on all kinds of materials that are linked with them. When we were in Manchester we met a lady called Dr Ali Ronan who was fantastic. She spent the day with us and she was telling us about um, local people in history, especially Selena Cooper. Uh, she showed us quite a bit of information about them and the girls asked her lots of questions. I think they got a lot out of that visit. Dr Ali Ronan talked to the girls about a lot of young women, not dissimilar age to them, who lived in Burnley and Nelson and the surrounding area a hundred years ago, who were campaigning for women's suffrage, were campaigning for peace, and told them about the Peace Crusade, which set off from Nelson and went all the way to London. And again, trying to tell those stories of young women like are participants who had the confidence to create change or to get involved or to be politically active and that they felt that something good could come out of Burnley and they made changes for that. My area of interest is women's history particularly, forgotten women's history and I'm particularly interested in women and people who do things that they don't have to do that make their life difficult. So I'm kind of interested in, in that kind of tension really between women who could have sat at home neatly and women who chose to be involved in some kind of campaign and activism. I think it's really important that the girls have a sense of the history of their area, that it was a town that had a kind of sense of itself it was very proud of its radical nature, the fact that it was campaigning for the vote, campaigning for better workers' rights, that it was just a place that was at the time really at the forefront of lots of reforms. And I think that's been forgotten. And I think also for young women, in the kind of times we live in now, although we have things like Me Too and girls are quite aware, I think, of feminism, I think they're not taught so much about the strong women in the past who might have described themselves as early feminists but were very passionate about things like women's rights and the vote. There's something about that sense of radicalism and challenging the status quo that I think is probably really important for the girls to think about. The colours on one of the banners were white, purple, white and green. And I think that's an inspiration of mine, of what I'm going to put on my banner. I think you could like, everyone is um, equal. And all is equal. And all put like, like mottos about women in Burnley and like uh, that everybody equal, is equal. So as well as the research element of this project, one of the major aspects of the project is the practical making. And what we wanted to do is give them this space this um, in an individual banner to reflect some of the things they've learned and to celebrate some of the messages that they would like to promote to other young people. Like she made this. Yeah. So you can see um, this like designs in it and they represent equality of women. When we went to the People's History Museum in Manchester, there was a display there and it like they change it every so often. But because it's around the hundred year mark of the women's rights, it were all about women's rights and women's votes and equal pay and things like that. So when we were looking around there we saw symbols on these banners and things. I made for my banner. Um, a stamp out form to incorporate their history and then ours as well. We did a printing session with the Year 11s. They looked at how they could design a 
printing block, how they would cut it, how they would print it and create a repeat pattern with it. And then a couple of weeks later, with a little bit more support about how they would lead that session, those Year 11 girls then taught the Year 6s how to do that. And that was fantastic. Both the confidence that they had and the responsibility they took in leading that session and the enjoyment that the Year 6s got out of it was fantastic. So the banners in their content, some of them are very historical based and some of them are very much the Instagram generation of positive statements, aim high or be yourself or sort of things that are promoting confidence in young women today. bit was probably cutting the words out and deciding on the the options to put on the banner and like the words and the colours. We wanted the girls obviously to learn new skills and we wanted to connect with local people from the textile industry. I saw an article about a young designer called Becca Who and she's creating her own designs and making skirts, bags, they just so inspirational and the designs are amazing, they're beautiful and I just thought I'll be really cheeky and contact her and see if she'd be interested in coming and chatting to the girls. She said yes straight away, she was really passionate about sharing her experience and her career path that she'd had. Um, so Becca came along to a few of the sessions and showed them the process that she went through when she's designing some of her art pieces. She did some brilliant sessions where she looked at how you would create a repeat pattern and actually gave the girls the opportunity to each design their own individual unique piece of fabric which she then took away and got digitally printed up and made into bags and we also ordered lengths of fabric which will be used on their banners. This is a designer who's producing the most amazingly ornate contemporary designs on velvet that are selling to a very high-end market and she's here in Burnley making her business work. She's a local woman. So again, just trying to reiterate to the girls, good things come out of Burnley and they can be part of that. I've always loved art and design, so starting Becca Who two years ago was really just coming back to what I absolutely love. Um, I've worked in other industries as well and starting Becca Who was taking a risk, it was taking a chance, um, but it was staying true to what I really, really love to do, which is hand drawing and turning those into products that other people can love and enjoy. The artwork that I've created to date is largely inspired by the thing that I love the most, which is animals, wildlife and nature. So we're really lucky here in Burnley, we're surrounded by so much countryside um, and it's one of those things that's such a good thing to do to relax. Wherever we are in the world, we all enjoy nature, but particularly to celebrate what we have in Lancashire and in Britain, we're really lucky to have that on our doorstep. I really enjoyed the workshop today because it got me thinking about inspirations and people who've motivated me. We also went to a place called Clarion House, which again is local, but uh, I think the majority of us had not been before, I definitely hadn't, and I were pleasantly surprised actually, I thought it was a lovely little building. The girls met both the warden of Clarion House and a local historian who were really generous in telling stories about the last surviving Clarion House in the country and why the Clarion movement is so significant. The girls um, obviously learnt about the building and the uh, importance of that building for people and one of the people that they learnt about from there was uh, Selena Cooper who was a local person that worked in the textile industry and she was key to that building. This woman here is Selena Cooper. Selena Jane Cooper lived on St Mary's Street in Nelson. Fantastic woman. She used to go around to all the mills collecting money off the mill workers and she collected money for women and babies clinics because they were the first ones in the country. There weren't women and baby clinics, but she uh, started them up and she collected the money off all the workers in the mills and the factories. And she was a suffragist, not a suffragette. She believed in lobbying for the vote by persuading people this was the right thing to do, not by smashing windows. Mm -hmm. and, burning buildings down, but uh, I think I might have been a suffragette. <laughs> <laughs>
But she was um, an amazing woman and she was very strong and a good example to all uh, future generations and you should remember her as a strong, strong woman. I think it really hit home for the girls looking down onto Burnley up from Pendle Hill and thinking that this was a space where on your one half day holiday in the week you can escape the smog and the dirt of your Victorian mill and get up onto Pendle Hill and get a bit of fresh air, meet your fellow workers, maybe take a bit of time to read the fellowship, friendship and camaraderie that the Clarion movement supported, I think was a very new information to the girls. The Clarion house story allowed them to think about some of the positive things that people got out of working in terms of a little bit more independence, a bit more money and also an opportunity to spend their time in a way that was appropriate to them and that they enjoyed. There's so much going on today uh, in people's lives, especially young people's lives, and I think it all gets very intense. And I think sometimes it's great to bring them back down to earth and tell them about what actually happened. And history is really important for young people, I think. They need to know where they've come from and the benefits of some of the work that people in their past has done and how it benefits them uh, and I just think they need to know about it really. I'm passionate about making sure young people know about the history, really, especially around here. I think it's important for these uh, girls today um, to have a look because I think they can be very much inspired. When you look at what women achieved in the past, you know, against all the odds with regard to campaigning for the vote and peace campaigns, etc. I think by telling this to the young women of today, um, I'm hoping that we can inspire them to think that if they could do it, you know, when they hadn't all that much incentive, why shouldn't we be able to do it? And I hope that's the message that they've taken away uh, from us today. Inside the building I found out that the banners was made 106 years ago, like the same as the building. I thought that was really interesting because it looked good in shape and I didn't think it was over 100 years ago. I found that the clarion means to shout out and say what you need to say. The girls I think have found it really, really interesting going visiting all these buildings. They've learnt a lot and it's been a great experience for them to go out and go to these other buildings on the doorsteps that they didn't realise were there. Another organisation that I contacted was John Spencer Textiles, which is based in Burnley. They're really passionate about keeping things local and I met a lovely lady called Debbie Catterall. I went to meet Debbie and she was really keen to sort of share her journey, but also for the girls to go and meet other women in the factory. Uh, we went on the shop floor and they saw the processes on the shop floor, got to interview some of the ladies and we did the whole process really from start to finish, so inspection, sewing, and again the girls learnt so much and they didn't even realise it were there and that they were producing such fantastic stuff. So um, what sort of things do you do um, in the mill? I'm a warper, so I make the beams that go into the weaving shed which they then weave into cloth. What's made you proud during your time here? Um, seeing the finished article from us winding it, to creeling it, to warping it, it being woven and turned into the cloth. What do you do here? I inspect the fabric before it goes to the customer. What advice would you give my group Proud Banks? Make it bright. Yeah, bright, short, to the point, yeah. Do you think there's still a disparity in the workplace between men and women being equal? Possibly, but I think it'll be getting less, much less, yeah. I think equality's on its way. The finishing company that does the throws is in Fall Ridge. The finishing company that does a lot of the uh, fabric when it comes off the loom has to be washed. Yeah. That's done, uh, unfortunately, in Yorkshire. 
other side, <laughs> other side of the border, but we'll forgive them for that. So we really do try and keep it as local as we can. There are some things that we have to go overseas, but I would say that's probably less than 5% of what we do. So we'll go and see Deborah, who's uh, the designer. I've got two roles in this business, so I design the fabrics for um, our retail company called Ian Mankin and I also create specs for various different companies for different end uses. When you've designed all this, does it go downstairs into the um, part where they weave it and they make it? Yes, so we have CAD software which we do all our main designs on and then we can then send that information over to the loom and then um, weave it from there. And what are all these what are up right now? Okay, so this um, selection of, of boards are our mood boards. So that's our um, primary research and then these are our development boards which we then do like further drawings and sampling goes on further than that until we get our full new range for production. The last lady for you to speak to is Elaine who's a weaver. So she's responsible for the actual production of the fabric. So we have to make sure you put some earplugs in. Do you want to explain what you do here? I'm a weaver make cloth for different things. We don't really ask what they are, we just weave them because there's that many different sorts going in all the time. Weaving jobs and that are just as good as any other jobs. At one time you went in here because you didn't go to school very often, but now there's a lot of different things that go on. How many looms do you run? We run the whole shed between us all. Uh, don't ask me how many looms are in there because I don't know. <laughs> we didn't realise as such a small organisation how far their products went. You feel proud from a local point of view, what's being done, keeping it in Burnley and yeah, and it's on our doorstep. I think the main advice we, was to use like bright colours. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. said to use bright colours. So The lady who did the design part, she just mentioned about how to use different types of fabrics, which we have done. Yeah. And it was just so many different people working on different stations. Like, yeah. I didn't know that it went through that many before you could get your comfy blanket out. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. Really Thank you. Oh, hello. We like it. Yeah. Come back and get your bags are here. The girls met Becca Who, a young inspirational woman that lives and works in Burnley and they produced their own artwork that they've been working on and then at the end of it they had a bag made for them. They didn't know that they were going to get the bags which were a brilliant surprise for them, they just thought they were going to see the actual finished artwork which were fantastic. <laughs> I can't believe it created this. Just look at it. Like, can you believe this was what I designed? So today you brought us our bags, which were gorgeous. Um, what did you think of the reactions to our bags? I was really hoping for those reactions. You all look so happy, as you should be. I think the work that you've done really shows in the result. I think they're fabulous. The patterns definitely exceeded expectations. I think you all worked really hard and thought exactly about inspirational pattern. Inside the bag, yeah, like the letters were in there. Like, what did you think of the reactions to them? I did the letters because I felt that each girl should really be proud of what they put into the pattern. For some it was exceptional drawing skills, for others it was really strong ideas, but everybody embraced the workshop and did a really, really good job of the design. So I wanted to put that into a letter form for you to remember to take it forward. The inspirations that we've touched on, things like confidence is key that you put in, it really is, and I want you to take that forward. I've really enjoyed the project working with you, like, 
it's been so inspirational, like hearing your story and seeing what you've done and how you've made something out of yourself. It's so big and it makes me so proud. And I just want to know, did you enjoy working with us? I've absolutely loved it. It's been such a good experience for me as well. It is a little bit emotional at times because it is rooted in feeling inspired, being your best, aiming high, coming out of your comfort zone. And I'm, I'm just really proud of you all and thank you so much for embracing the workshop the way you have done. We thank you so much for coming and just like really inspiring us all. And you have boosted our confidence because at the start we didn't think we could do it and then now we have these gorgeous bikes. So thank you so much. Oh, you're really, really welcome. We organised a tea party for inspirational women that live and work in Burnley and we invited them and the girls to meet and to chat about their career paths and what had inspired them, what made them choose the roles that they've chosen, did they stick to what they thought they were going to do when they were sort of like in year 10 or 11. I think the girls were really surprised with some of the stories that they, they heard. That were really nice for the girls to meet people from different sectors, there were nursery nurses, artists, youth workers because yeah, lots of different backgrounds, so that were a really, really interesting event. Can you tell me about the things that make you happy? Wow. Which of your achievements are you the most proud of? Being a mother and, and having Gracie really. That's, that's the biggest achievement really. Yeah. I've done all sorts of absolutely incredible things. I've been so privileged with my life. Uh, and what I'd be saying to people is if people tell you you're worth nothing, just find somebody who says you are because all of us are worth something really. So if you could give one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, I think that would be really find your passion and then just focus on it and really go for it. Where's your favourite place, Lexi? Here in Burnley. Yeah, just at home really. If there's something out there that you really want, don't let people tell you that you can't do it. That's the biggest advice. To, I hear that too many times. That, you know, I mean, I employ some fabulous, fabulous girls, and I tell them if it's something that you really, really want to do, go for it. It doesn't matter what anybody else tells you, they tell you you can't do it, just go for it. Just pursue something that you want to do. If you really want to do it, you can make it happen and, and keep going, believe in yourself, and just do what makes you happy. To finish everything off, we're going to launch all the artwork that the girls have been working on. It's amazing what they've created, it's absolutely fantastic. From the mechanics, the exhibition will then go to Gawthorpe Hall and the exhibition will be there for a couple of months and so family and friends will be able to go along and have a look and the public. So that is just going to be an amazing experience for the girls just to show what they've achieved. At the end of the project, I really hope the girls take a number of things away with them. Obviously, I'd love them all to become textile artists, and I think there's one or two that might, but more importantly, I think what they'll take away with them is that sense of knowing a little bit more about their hometown, how it was built on textiles as one of its key industries, and also how that legacy continues to inform what Burnley is as a place now, and that they're part of that legacy. Wherever you start in life, ultimately you don't know where you're going to end up, but you should be proud of where you're from. We all have so much of our lives rooted in our hometown. I've always lived in Burnley and, and don't plan to leave at any time soon. And I think it's looking for all of the positives. We, we often think about when we go on holiday, oh, I love that place, and, but we do equally like coming home and there's reasons for that. And it is things like the people and the countryside and all these positives and you have to keep the positives in mind, I think. In this project I've learned lots of different skills about art and things. The main one is embroidery because I never knew how to do that and now I can do it. I learned a lot about the fact that we have a lot of history here around us and it's not just in big places like London and stuff. Like there is a lot of history to do with our little town. I'm proud of where I am now. Before I went in a good place with confidence but now I am and I'm proud of that.
My family and my friends make me happy. Like, my mum is like an actual star. Like, I love my mum so much. Make sure you put that in there. So, while I've been doing the project, I've learned a lot of things. But in particular, I hope the banners will educate people on the past of Burnley and the women. But I also hope that it will get our messages across, our personal messages. And I've also learned how to iron. I really love young people. I think they, they sort of bring you back to what you really believe in. And I just think that's so life affirming. I think it always gives me hope. You think, yeah, these are young women engaged and wanting to learn about things. So, yeah, hope for the future. We hope that as well as enjoying the project, the girls will have more confidence in themselves and know that they can achieve whatever they put their mind to and that they will go on to be inspirational role models themselves. And we want to design other projects so that we can keep that relationship with all our girls and provide them with more opportunities for learning and personal growth in the future. There are some young women in this group who will be achieving great things. Their confidence has just grown immensely during the course of the project and I think particularly with the year 11s, the skills that they've developed in mentoring the younger girls I think will really serve them well in whatever field they go into. Those transferable skills I'm sure will do them well in the future, no doubt about that. So this is the year 6's nearly finished banner that we worked on together. If you can look closely, there's like orange tacking in it still, so that needs to be taken out. And then there's a red banding going on the outside. But it's been fun helping them and watching them bring this all together. Showing them that they can complete something and do something and it'll look really good in the end. So, that's been fun. I'd just like to thank the Heritage Lottery for funding this project because I've had a lot of fun and learned a lot of new things, so thank you. We're here for the uh, exhibition launch of our Happy and Proud project. Um, I'm really excited for everyone to see what these amazing girls have achieved. I think the girls are going to be really overwhelmed to see the banners actually in situ, so it's going to be really interesting to see what people think. I think what they've produced and what's being produced is absolutely fantastic. I've seen them going out of school and being involved in some of these trips and the workshops and the mentoring, but actually then to see what the content and the quality of what they've been involved and working with. I can't believe the progress that they've made, it's amazing and I really loved watching them get involved in the artwork and the designs and going through the whole process and look what they've produced, I'm, I'm stunned, I think they're so excellent, they're so professional, they could, have, they could go out anywhere and they could even go in the People's History Museum, they're so good I think, so yeah I'm very impressed and also seeing them develop as young women and come out of being really shy and quiet and hesitant and now to be so full of enthusiasm and confidence, it's just amazing, I'm so impressed. Amazing to, uh, to see what the girls have done all come together. They should be really proud of themselves. Um, you know, I had a tiny part in it, I'm more than happy to do that, but I think it'll be lifelong learning for them what, what they've gained from this project. Seeing the banners that I hadn't seen, they look phenomenal. You know, the workmanship that you've put into those is fantastic. I'm so proud to be the Mayor of Burnley. It's exceptional what they've actually done and I hope they take that and, and they progress through life and, and make their lives a, a, a fantastic thing to do. Working in the, the mills, as I used to do when I was a teenager, I was an apprentice uh, engineer there, so I know what it's like to work in those mills. I know what people suffered in those mills and what they've come out with is a tremendous thing. I think the banners are wonderful. I particularly like um, the ones about Burnley, you know, about the textile industry. I thought to see the, the, the mill still working, the threads, that kind of thing, and the things about Kay Shuttleworth, I thought it really got that sense of uh, everything and the things about Selena and the Clarion, and also the ones the girls have done about how they feel about themselves, stand tall, you know, I thought it was fabulous.
you to Burnley Mechanics. I am really, truly delighted to see you all. Today, we're going to share with you the wonderful work produced by the Happy and Proud Girls. Girls, today you can feel proud of all you have achieved. You have overcome so many challenges to get to today. Stand tall and be happy. Every single person in this room is rooting for you and celebrating your success. You are all amazing. I'm really sad this project's ended, but we are going to think of other ideas for a new project with more young people and maybe these girls to do some more mentoring. I just hope everybody really appreciates all the hard work the girls have put into this project. They're our future, the future talent of Burnley, just amazing. 